So you want to learn to draw, but where do you start? What are the steps to go from zero to hero? And to answer this question, we're going to go on an art journey, looking at the skills that you should focus on as a beginner while making our way in a carefully structured fashion towards our goal of eventually being able to draw anything you can imagine. The skill tree to go from level zero to 100 as an artist. So if you've been curious about learning art, from scratch or you've just been stuck along the way and you're not sure how to move forward tag along this episode of youtube art school should help here it begins the starting point just like in a video game with a new character you're about to learn your first art skill the first of many and by the way as we progress through the video as you level up, we'll unlock different skills that will then become the foundation to unlock more advanced skills. And stick around because later in the video, we'll even look at different art builds or sets of skills that might be more important for you and maybe some skills that you could skip depending on your artist build of choice, either as a concept artist, illustrator, or comic artist. Also worth mentioning, I'll cover which skills you should learn, but I won't have time to explain how to learn them and what to practice in this short YouTube video, since that would literally take hours. But to help with that, I'll be referring you guys to a lot of other videos on the channel, which hopefully will be enough for many of you. But if you're looking for the ultimate power leveling cheat, the ultimate pay to win option when it comes to art education, check out my full art program that's currently on sale with the link in the video description. The holiday sale is almost over, but I'll be extending it for the new year to celebrate reaching 20,000 students just at a slightly reduced discount to be fair to all of those who got it early. It's not too late yet. Don't miss out. And now then, with your smudge guard equipped, your pen in hand, let's unlock the first skills of your artist's skill tree, the foundation upon which everything else will be built. Four. Everything you'll ever draw will always be based on this. It's the skill that will allow you to draw shapes in two dimensions, like circles, squares, and so on, but also, more importantly, simple 3D volumes like boxes, spheres, and cylinders. Just like Lego blocks, we can arrange shapes and volumes that most people can draw with very little practice and construct more complex structures. Thinking like an artist means thinking about form in everything you see and draw. And talking about seeing, the second fundamental skill is observation. Regular people see, artists observe. There's a big difference in the amount of information one can absorb versus the other. The process of simply seeing is passive, looking at things and having no further thoughts about it. Observing, on the other hand, is an active process, paying attention, trying to understand why things look a certain way and constantly being curious about the world around you. The sooner you make it a habit to observe instead of simply seeing, the faster you'll be able to climb up this skill tree. I have specific classes for both of these skills too, so check the video description later to find all the links to relevant classes. I actually have classes for the majority of the skills that we'll cover today. Very epic. And with your foundation established, we can now set our sight onto the next set of skills, starting with perspective basics. What are those exactly? Well, I like to think of things like the horizon, vanishing points, convergent lines, and one point perspective as being relatively simple to get into. And that should help you make sense of a lot of things art related moving forward. Right next to it, shading. Form alone might be enough to fool the eye of the viewer into thinking that a 2D drawing looks 3D-ish. But shading is really going to take that to the next level by enhancing the illusion of 3D and adding texture to the artwork. By varying the levels of brightness and darkness within the art, or what we call the values, you'll be able to create the illusion of depth and volume for an otherwise flat-looking line drawing. You'll be able to do this by using various methods like cross-hatching, stippling, or smooth blending. And then for the last skill at that level, we have gesture drawing. As the first real skill about the human figure, this might seem hard, but the goal here is not really to draw a perfect figure. Rather, it'll be to focus on quick sketches, targeting good proportions and poses. From 30 second photo studies to about like five minute max, the time constraint will force you to ignore details in your reference studies and focus instead on the bigger shapes, the big details. It should also start to spark a bunch of questions about anatomy and prime you for the more advanced skills to follow. So let's take a look at those and I'll go much faster for the rest as things will only get more and more self-explanatory as you gain experience and level up. It's really the structure here that's most important. So over here, we have clothing folds, 
Whether you prefer characters or environments, folds are often something you'll need to draw and learning how they work will go a long way. For environments, you know, that could be like a curtain, a tent. I say clothing folds, but it's really learning to draw fabrics in general. Then there's head construction, which I have on its own here. Just like in my art program, I like to dedicate a skill to it specifically because the head of your characters will often be the center of focus, what we notice and look at first, which makes it slightly more important than the rest of the body. Still, body construction is another important skill. We're not talking about anatomy yet. This would be more about learning to draw the human mannequin, a structure of simple volumes, you know, that by themselves are relatively easy to draw, but require some knowledge of proportions to look humanoid. And then at this level, I also added color theory basics now that we have a foundation in shading and values. The basics would be things like learning about the chromatic circle, what even makes up a color, aka the hue, the saturation, and the value, and maybe throwing in a few basic color harmonies to the mix. For the next level, looking at advanced color theory now, I'd recommend learning about color psychology, the importance of color temperature, like warm and cool colors, and how we perceive those, getting familiar with all the best known color harmonies, color relativity, and the power of the color gray. Next to that, we have the follow-up to perspective basics, which we already covered, advanced perspective. Some key notions to get familiar with here would be things like two and three point perspective, possibly even looking into four and five point perspective, how to draw a perfect box in perspective, how to draw circles in perspective, learning about atmospheric perspective too, maybe. At that level, we also have how to draw hands and feet, which I've considered a skill of its own, just like when drawing heads. I think it helps to focus on those in isolation since they are such complex body parts to draw. And then there's figure drawing too. Different than gesture drawing in the sense that the focus is no longer on proportions, poses, and quick sketches, but rather on longer studies from reference, like 10 minutes and up. Well, you'll want to include shading and pay close attention to the anatomy details that you're able to observe. With all of that, you should be ready to move on to the next stage. We're getting up there. So directly related to figure drawing, here we have anatomy basics to finally make sense of the human body now that you've had a lot of time to observe it. The basics only include the main bone structures of the body and the main groups of surface muscles. At this level, we'll also be dabbling in design for the first time. Character design first here, which is all about combining various references to create new ideas, like breaking up the Lego sets you just bought and using the pieces to construct something new without a manual to guide you through each step, using your creativity. Drawing animals. You'll notice this shares a lot with the anatomy basics since animals share like 90% to 95% of their anatomy with us humans when you look only at the bones and the muscles. Much like figure drawing, this will include drawing from reference, but also learning about anatomy to understand the small differences between the animal families. And then you'll get to use a lot of that to go into creature design. Once again, just like with characters, you'll borrow from nature and combine different animals to create new ones, exaggerate certain features and play with colors to create imaginary beasts, insects, giant lizards like dragons, and so on. For the last skill on that level, I included storytelling because it goes hand in hand with design. Storytelling in art is all about giving your creations depth, taking a simple generic drawing and adding details that suggest a backstory. Like a simple scar on a character's face could suggest a previous encounter that didn't go too well. It's a skill that will allow you to draw things people will find an emotional connection to, something they'll remember. And finally, at max level, these are the skills I think are worth learning to really complement your knowledge so far. Learning to draw facial expressions here will unlock many possibilities when drawing characters that you should be able to utilize now with a knowledge of storytelling. Advanced anatomy will be a continuation of the anatomy basics. We'll dive into perhaps the individual muscles of the body, learn to draw different body parts and different angles with foreshortening and accurate muscle placement. Basically, the aim would be to avoid making anatomy mistakes that could potentially ruin your drawings. Here, we also have the composition skill, helping you understand how to display the various elements in your artwork in a way that reads well, like good formatting in a book. You should learn about the composition ratios, like the golden rule, the rule of thirds, what kind of frame works best for the things that you want to illustrate maybe, what is and how to use the focal point, and all of that will serve you well when drawing just about anything. But definitely for environment design, which is the next skill. 
Here, you'll use everything you've learned so far to create environments that have depth, environments that pull you in and that others might want to visit, maybe. And then the last skill, prop design, will help you fill up your environments full of interesting objects, help you dress up your characters with interesting gadgets. And while often it isn't something most think about, if you spend the time on designing good props, it has the potential to add a lot of storytelling to your art and really draw in the viewer. And there you have it. With all those skills, you really should be able to draw nearly everything your mind can imagine. You should be a complete artist. It's not gonna happen overnight, of course. It'll take years, probably. But the power to draw anything is the best in the world, in my opinion. No wonder I spent my life dedicated to it. And before we wrap things up, I did promise to go over three different artist builds. Concept artist, illustrator, and comic artist. Let's do that now. Starting with the concept artist build. I've highlighted the skills that are going to be essential for the concept artist. Someone whose focus will be on design primarily. Character, environment, creature, prop design. This is someone who won't need to create super polished works of art, but rather someone whose goal will be to sell ideas through drawings. The skills I've left grayed out won't serve you as well if concept art is all that you're interested in. Next, the illustrators build. An illustrator's main purpose is usually not to sell an idea, but sell a product or an emotion instead. Their art might tell a whole story. There's going to be an emphasis on mood, ambience, drama, lighting, and the quality of the render. So these are the skills that will serve them best. And then the comic artist build. Here, the focus will be on drawing, not the quality of the render. Usually, comics will mostly feature line drawings and the same characters in different poses, displaying different emotions. Of course, storytelling will be huge here, so these are the skills that will be most beneficial if that's what you're interested in. And well, that's gonna be it for this week's class. That was a lot of work, but hopefully you found it useful and it was worth it. Let me know in the comments, share the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next year.